revisiting Peter Hillwood's first match as Arsenal chairman in 1982. The sad passing of former Arsenal chairman Peter Hillwood at the age of 82 serves as yet another reminder of how much the face of English football has changed over recent decades. Take the Arsenal lineup from his first match as the club's chairman back in August 1982, which consisted of nine Englishmen, a Scot and an Irishman. Such a team is virtually unthinkable nowadays in the cosmopolitan Premier League where it's assumed that the finest talents from scores of countries around the world will be seen. Given that Hillwood's time as chairman saw Arsenal win five league championships, five FA Cups, two League Cups and the European Cup Winners' Cup, that afternoon back in 1982 wasn't the most auspicious start as they lost 2-1 at Stoke. Mind you, given how even the best of Arsene Wenger's teams struggled whenever they visited the Potteries. Perhaps this comes as little surprise. The Gunners had finished fifth in the old first division in 1981-82, which proved to be the final campaign under the chairmanship of Dennis Hillwood, Peter's father, who died in May 1982. With a new chairman at the helm, Arsenal visited the Victoria ground as favourites given Stoke's brush with relegation the following season. Indeed, many pundits had written them off as certainties for the drop. Arsenal fielded Scotland international George Wood between the posts and Ireland's finest David O'Leary, already something of a club stalwart, as centre-half. The remainder of the playing squad, Kenny Santum, Chris White, John Hollins, Graham Ricks, Stuart Robson, Brian Talbot, Lee Chapman, Tony Woodcock, Alan Sunderland and Paul Davis, were English. Stoke City 2-1 Arsenal Saturday August 28, 1982 First Division, Victoria Ground Stoke City, Peter Fox, David McCautry, Derek Parkin, Peter Hampton, Brendan O'Callaghan, George Barry, Peter Griffiths, Mickey Thomas, Paul Bracewell, Sammy McElroy, Mark Chamberlain Manager, Richie Barker Scorers, Barry, O'Callaghan Arsenal, George Wood, Chris White, Kenny Santum, David O'Leary. Stuart Robson, John Hollins, Brian Talbot, Graham Ricks, Lee Chapman, Alan Sunderland, Paul Davis, Tony Woodcock Manager, Terry McNeil Scorer, Sunderland Attendants, 15,504 Referee, Clive Thomas, Wales, Completing the home nation's feel was the Gunners Manager, Northern Irishman Terry Neal who remarkably young for a top-level manager at just 40. Chapman was making his Arsenal debut after a £500,000 switch from Stoke over the summer and, thanks to some ill-judged comments about his former club, was handed a hostile reception by the crowd of 15,504. Against all expectations, Stoke took a fifth-minute lead with a corner routine straight off the pre-season training ground. Mickey Thomas swung it in, Brendan O'Callaghan flicked it on at the near post and George Barry scored at the back post. Mark Chamberlain, a new signing at Stoke, was in excellent form, turning Santum, who had played for England at that summer's World Cup in Spain, inside out all game. And early in the second half, Chamberlain left Santum for dead before crossing for O'Callaghan to double the lead. Though Sunderland did score a late response for Arsenal it couldn't prevent them sliding to an opening day defeat. And though Arsenal would obviously go on to enjoy considerable success during Hillwood's time at the helm, it wasn't immediately obvious by the way they lost three of their opening four games. An 8-4 aggregate defeat to Spartak Moscow also saw Arsenal out of the UEFA Cup at the first hurdle and in the end, they finished the season a disappointing 10th. Hillwood was born in Kensington, London on February 25, 1936, and was educated at Eton. He enjoyed a starred military career, rising to the rank of lieutenant in the Coldstream Guards, before moving into finance, becoming vice chairman of Hambrose Bank. Hillwood joined the Arsenal board in August 1962, along with his father Dennis who served as chairman, and following his grandfather Samuel, who led the club between 1927 and 1936, and again between 1939 until his death in 1949. He succeeded his father as chairman after Dennis died in June 1982, and led Arsenal until June 2013, when ill health forced his retirement. He had suffered a heart attack the previous year, and had also been ill with pneumonia. 
Among his greatest decisions were the appointment of some of Arsenal's most successful managers, including George Graham and Arsene Wenger, a leading role in the formation of the Premier League in 1992, and the move from Highbury to the Emirates Stadium in 2006. He is survived by his wife Sally, and his three children, Sarah, Julian and Charles. 